From Washington, I'm Christopher Cruz. Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi has set December 15th as the day for voters to approve or reject a planned new constitution. The document has caused large protests. Mr. Morsi announced the date after Egypt's legislature gave him the final version late Saturday. The draft constitution uses Islamic law as the main source of new laws in the country. Earlier Saturday, tens of thousands of Islamists demonstrated across Egypt to support Mr. Morsi. The Muslim Brotherhood political party had called for the gatherings. Mr. Morsi is a former member of that party. Also Saturday, thousands of protesters gathered in Cairo's Tahrir Square for a ninth day. They have been showing their opposition to a decision by Mr. Morsi to give himself new powers that cannot be limited by judges. Syrian forces shelled areas near the capital Damascus Saturday. Activists reported airstrikes, artillery fire, and clashes in towns and villages near a main road to Syria's international airport. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said 14 rebels were killed by government shelling near a military base southwest of Damascus. Some Middle East experts say they believe the Syrian government is trying to establish a border around Damascus so that they can be in a position to negotiate a solution to the 20-month-long conflict. Voting has now ended in Kuwait's parliamentary elections. They were held Saturday. Witnesses say fewer voters marked ballots in some districts than in past elections. The opposition boycotted the election because of new rules put in place by Kuwait's leader, the emir. In October, he used emergency powers to cancel an electoral law that let voters cast four votes. Voters now have just one vote. Critics of the change say the new rule will make it easier for officials and the ruling family to influence the elections. Saturday's election is the second one this year. A number of assemblies have collapsed because of a power struggle between elected members of parliament and the cabinet, which is controlled by Kuwait's long-ruling Al-Sabah family. You are listening to the news in VOA Special English from Washington. Rebels in the Democratic Republic of Congo have now withdrawn from the eastern city of Goma. Hundreds of M23 rebels sang victory songs and waved their weapons as they pulled out of the city on Saturday. United Nations peacekeepers stood along the sides of the road as the rebels left. VOA reporter Gabe Josselow says the rebels headed north toward the town of Kibumba. The rebels agreed to withdraw to a position 20 kilometers outside of Goma under a regionally negotiated deal. Rebel leader Sultani Makenga spoke to reporters Saturday. He said his soldiers are ready to return to the city if President Joseph Kabila does not honor the terms of the agreement. Emergency workers in the Republic of Congo say at least 30 people were killed Friday when a plane smashed into houses near Brazzaville's airport. The victims included all six crew members of the cargo plane, as well as people who lived in homes near the airport. Armenia's foreign ministry confirmed Saturday that the pilots were Armenian. 
The plane was a four-engine jet made by the Soviet Union. It crashed while trying to land at the Brazzaville Maya Maya Airport. It went off the runway and entered an area of homes. There has not been an official statement on the cause of the crash, but witnesses said the plane was trying to land during a violent storm. In Mexico Saturday, Enrique Peña Nieto was sworn in as president after being elected in July. His election brings the Institutional Revolutionary Party, also known as the PRI, back to power for the first time in 12 years. The PRI ruled Mexico for 71 years before it was replaced by the National Action Party in 2000. There were protests inside and outside the room where the swearing-in ceremony was held. Leftist lawmakers showed signs criticizing Mr. Peña Nieto, including one that said, Mexico is in mourning. Outside, metal barriers surrounding the Congress building kept thousands of protesters from entering the building. Some demonstrators threw small bombs. Police fired tear gas to try to force them to leave the area. At least 20 people, including police officers, were injured in clashes. And finally at this hour, in Pakistan, rescuers are searching for more victims of several snow slides that killed at least 11 soldiers and civilians in the mountains of Kashmir on Friday. Officials said at least nine people are missing, including members of a rescue group who were hit by another avalanche as they searched for victims of the earlier snow slides. Avalanches and landslides happen often in Kashmir, which is divided between Pakistan and India. In April, an avalanche in Pakistani Kashmir killed 140 soldiers and civilians.